on video? Yep. Hey guys, Thank welcome you. back to Mark IV TSI swap video number seven, I believe. Um, we picked up this not so beautiful uh, 2010 GTI CVFA engine with 136 mile thousand, 136,000 on it. Um, manual transmission. Uh, exactly what we wanted. The interior was already gone. They already parted that out and they took the front end off already. So it was perfect made for us basically. Um, Ryan has spent the last two, three days, two days, four days, pulling the harness out of the interior, pulling out wires that we don't need, pulling all the interior stuff out. Um, then he cut a hole through the firewall right here and we pulled the harness out <clears throat> that's what's left of it so now we have the ECU the BCM the gateway the cluster the key and the steering module and yeah the steering steering column module because that's part of the key stuff and both of the fuses boxes which have Five fuses in it. This is, we haven't pulled any out of here yet. But we don't need most of those also. So, um, start it up or do we want to? Mm, do you want to do a walkthrough of uh, what we're keeping on the car or you want to just roll into that? Sure. All right. And then we sold the suspension. Yeah, we sold the suspension. The Audubon wheels are going to get sold. We kept the Dyna audio system out of it, so we can put the Dyna audio speakers in, in the Mark, the Mark IV. IV. Uh, pretty much just other than the fuel pump. Fuel pump's been taken out. Yeah. Pump module. And the fuel pump module. Other than that, there's nothing really else we wanted to keep off the car. <clears throat> yeah. Like it's, it's a little bit of a rust bucket. So we got it. Got it fairly cheap. Yeah, everywhere, everywhere we talked, or everybody we talked to said they wanted five hundred dollars for the harness, and, and they we had to, us to come pull it. They wanted us to come pull it, and it was on a strict time frame. Uh, they wouldn't do it on Saturdays or Sundays, so we were kind of limited. And I, we got a hold of this guy. He just needed the front end off the car, and he guaranteed it ran. He started up in front of us, which mm -hmm. was a selling point, and we got the car for twelve hundred. We've already got the wheels sold. The suspension's about to be sold, the engine sold, and pretty much that's already paid for the car. And then now we have our harness, and then we have a transmission that has a bad case, but the gear set's good on it. So we'll get some more money out of it. Mm -hmm. right. so, yeah, so that's the one that we're talking about. Yeah, that's the one that comes out. What's this thing called again? A thread ripper? Yeah, seam ripper. For anybody who has done this harness like I used to do, by hand with a razor blade, dude, get get a, a thread ripper, seam ripper, whatever the hell it's called. Dude, it makes life so much easier. Everyone talks about those. I guess not, because I ain't never heard of it. <laughs> Humble mentors them in lots of videos. But he makes lots of videos. Yeah, so you're right. <laughs> I think he is. Hi guys, over the last four days I've been dealing with this harness. Man, was it a mess. <laughs> we had to take out everything from the body control modules for sunroof, the hatch, seats, ABS, doors, doors, stereo system, HVAC controls, uh, st steering controls for the actual column. Mm -hmm. We went off the theory. What do we not need for the engine? And we started from the back, working to the front. Started with the passenger rear harness. Um, actually, no, the sun or all the fabric and everything was out. The headliner was out, so we started yep. with the. I uh, started with the roof. No, I didn't need anything up there, but it was theory was get it out in the ground, go from there. So we started uh, doing that. Then went to the fuel pump side. Went all the way up to the front of the car, pulled that fuel pump wiring to the side, and then slowly started 
peeling everything away. Mm -hmm. We got it down to the BCM, the interior fuse box, two, two to three relays. Two? No, four. Well, two for this. There's two more somewhere for the ECU. Right there. There's, we put it in there. Oh, yeah. We got it down to the steering column control module, the cluster, the CAN bus unit, the pedal, and the underhood fuse box. Uh, we haven't actually taken all the fuses out of the fuse box yet, but even that fuse box is uh, narrowed down to almost seven, eight fuses left. Mm -hmm. So once we did that, we brought the brought the harness out, cut the remainder of the stuff we didn't need out, and now we're at the point where we're where it's sitting, and. Now we can actually test it. Fuel pump primed. Mm -hmm. We're getting power to the cluster. Power to the throttle body. Cluster's on. Should be good. Yep. Yeah. And the only thing we haven't yet to figure out, which we. Well, we figured it out. We took it all out of this harness. Yeah, we, the Mark V, Mark VI, we're low on coolant. The uh, Mark V and Mark VI runs a CAN bust steering column control, which the mm -hmm. starter switch and all that's inside there. So what we're end up doing is running the Mark IV ignition wiring. From the key to the starter. To the with the clutch switch. Okay. Yep. And then after that, our game plan is to get rid of the steering module completely, get rid of the BCM, but we're just trying to figure out which ones are triggers and which ones have to be five volt, five volt supply, and which ones have to be relayed, and which ones are grounds. Yep. But we narrowed it down from almost 40 wires down to 13? 13, 14. Something. But here we go. Running. So yeah, it's on a minimal harness. We have a lovely whole tote full of wiring that came out of the car that's absolutely useless. Well, then we use it for if we have to extend anything when we get it in the car, so we can have yep. color match wiring. Yeah. But this is a this is a big step. The next thing is to uh, work on the Mark IV. I gotta trim out that harness a little bit, even though we've got most of it out. We're using the oil pressure switch out of that harness. We're using the vehicle speed out of that harness. We're using the coolant temp sensor. And coolant level. And coolant level, because the five and six runs a inline level sensor to one of the temperature switches. And they piggyback off one another while the Mark IV uses two individual sensors. So we're going to leave those in the harness. We're going to delete the fan control sensor, which is in the lower hose. And that's where we're going to put our temperature sensor for in the dash. Yep. And then we're going to use the correct one, which is on the water pump, is for the, we're sending to the ECU. ECU. So between that, I don't foresee why the harness, we won't have to be done with the harness in the next couple days. Yeah. The next, the next big thing we're doing with this harness, we're down to five fuses for the interior fuse box, which is OB, two of them are for OBD, one of them's for the fuel pump, and I believe the other two are for the ECU. I think so, yeah. And then, other than that, one of the leads <laughs> is switched power, and, or no, two of the leads are switched powered, and yep. one's a full-time power, or vice versa. Vice versa. One's, one is switched, two are, so two fuses are switched, and three are constant. Correct, yeah, yeah. So the game plan is actually to unhook it from this and go into, plug them directly into the Mark IV fuse box, 
The only thing we're still looking on a little bit is the one relay, the starter relay. Yep. Which we're gonna that I what we're thinking we're gonna do is take the wire from the relay that's in the car now, seeing that starter relay. Yeah. Is gonna go bye bye. And we're gonna plug the power supply or the power source into the bottom of this relay. Yeah, we're just But that's if we stick with with this system, because that's yeah, because that's the power supply that's coming off it. Yeah, so we have to do it that way. But yeah, this has been a giant pain, but our game our game plan was to have at least get this harness to where it is now. So we can start getting it in the car this week. Yep. We figured out the clutch situation. Um, clutch Masters is, is coming through with a good clutch. So hopefully we'll have that here within a week or two. Get the trans back in the car. And then we can start laying harnesses back in. Yeah. So. I was a little bit worried about this. Yeah. Until about a week ago. We... We've been testing back and forth, which I don't don't think you guys want to watch thirty minutes of uh, dying in this harness. Last night the fuse box backed out a little bit, and yep. we cut another five wires out of the BCM we thought we didn't need. Well, we end up not needing them, but it would not start. We, we were couldn't get to dag that for like an hour, and then <laughs> smash the fuse box together, and it worked there perfect. Well, I, ta I tapped the fuse box, and I heard the throttle body engage, so it was like cool. Figure our issue. Mm -hmm. So yeah, we're at the point now where we were going to take the harness, but with us getting rid of the, we're trying to get rid of the starter relay out of this, and the BCM. The starter relay is gone. Oh, yeah, yeah, we kicked it. We, we got that, that yesterday. Yes. That's that relay right there. Yeah, that little is, guy. Which is still, still got to pull out the harness though. We still didn't do that last sensor night. Wires. Yeah, we got to figure out there's something. That's cut, and that's cut. Oh, that's, the, that's the one to the starter. Yeah. And that's the power. So that's gone. And then also <clears throat> on the BCM, the black plug you do not need. You get all your power sources and grounds out of the white and tan. So like I said, there's a few more wires that we, we're going to pick out of the harness. And then we're going to slim it up some. I got to extend a couple of the K lines, or not K lines, I forgot. CAN bus. CAN bus. Mark three kids. Mark three kids. Yep. <laughs> we uh, I talked to a couple guys on the forums, and we can actually run our tax signal off of this setup. Yep. Through the powertrain uh, CAN bus high and CAN bus low, which goes directly into pin twenty and nineteen on the back of the Mark IV cluster. So now we figured out the cluster issues, mm -hmm. and then we're retaining ABS. We're not gonna have any of those issues. Nope. So yeah, just two wires we got to pin it, and yep. then. We're running the oil pressure switch and all that off that car, which is already in that one harness. So, yep. this is going to be a short video. We just wanted to go over the harness and uh, let you see how far we've gotten. The, the goal is to have this car done for Helen, be in Helen for Alpine. So, stay tuned. We uh, got a couple more things to do, and then on to the other car it goes. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe, guys.